There's this amazing force that God has built into the fabric of creation that can be called the law of attraction. But the law of attraction has been counterfeited by the new age. In fact, if you were to do an internet search on the law of attraction, you would be bombarded by new age books and teachings that will explain how you can draw the positive energy of the universe to you by sending out that same positive energy yourself. And the results according to these new age teachings can be health and wealth and happiness. Well, that's too bad, because had these new age thinkers taken the time to look at the Bible, they would see how this law really works. You see it at work throughout the teachings of Jesus. You see it in the laws given to Moses. It's throughout the wisdom teachings of King Solomon and Proverbs. God built it into the very fabric of creation. When you allow yourself to decrease, God is justified in giving you an increase. A negative charge will attract a positive charge. But all of this has been counterfeited by a new brand of thinkers who know neither God nor understand the true purpose of why this law works the way it does. The law of attraction is not about what the universe gives or takes away. It's about how the kingdom of heaven has been set up to operate, a system that was created before sin ever entered into the heart of a man, a strange system where the way to be exalted is to be humbled. The way to become truly alive is to die to self. The way to receive is to give. At the core of this seemingly backward kingdom, what holds it together is a gravitational field called faith. Not just any faith, faith in God. The law of attraction is not something that can be manipulated or controlled, though many have tried. It's a law that can only be understood by understanding the God who created it. That's what we're going to do. So join me in our next discovery, the mystery of the law of attraction. What is the law of attraction? The best way to describe it is to first look at an atom. In the world of the atom, a negative charge will always attract a positive charge. That's exactly how all matter is held together, atoms holding to atoms, through something called an atomic bond. There's an electromagnetic force that draws and holds atoms together, and that bond is based upon the attraction of positive and negative charges to each other. Since everything that exists is made up of atoms, it shouldn't be surprising to notice that this natural law also plays out on a much larger scale. Negative charges attract positive charges, and here's what I mean by negative charges. Whenever you give out, you create a negative charge. That negative charge will then attract a positive charge that comes from the kingdom of God. Therefore, for example, your giving to the poor subtracts something from you. That subtraction leaves you with a negative charge that will then attract kingdom positive charges your way. Well, I'm gonna leave the subatomic properties of this law to the scientist, but what's really interesting is how this law applies to you and me. We want to live a life that attracts heaven's blessings, and the Bible tells us we can do that. What we don't want to do is to try to manipulate this law for our own personal gain. That's why the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. That verse speaks to more than just the act of giving. It speaks to the heart behind the giving. This is why it's important to distinguish between God's law of attraction and the version the new age has taken and counterfeited. Let's look instead to how the Bible describes this law of attraction. Long before we had microscopes that could see into a cell what the cellular structure was, God was articulating the laws of attraction to his world. The kingdom of heaven is built upon an invisible foundation of seemingly illogical opposites. The way to, to be exalted is to humble yourself. The way up is down. The way to receive is to give. The way to be comforted is to grieve. The way to be strong is to be meek. That's illogical to the world, but it's not to us. None of this makes sense, though, until you start applying the law of attraction to them. Remember, 
negative charges will always attract a positive charge. It helps you understand why Jesus spoke in parables. The kingdom of heaven is constructed like nothing else. It's put together like a riddle, but the riddle isn't a riddle if it doesn't contain a clue. And guess what? This book is full of them. What do magnets and the law of attraction have in common? Well, they both have unseen forces that work to attract other things to them. Just like this magnet here. I can't see what's pulling these ball bearings to this magnet. But I do know that every time these ball bearings and this magnet get close to each other, they stick, they attract. This magnet is using a natural law of physics, but spiritual laws are just as predictable and measurable. When a negative charge is put out, a positive charge is attracted. The greatest benefit of a negative charge in the kingdom of God is that it's never a one-to-one -one exchange. It's at least a one-for-two or even a one-for-seven exchange. Don't you love God's economy? Well, first we need to establish what a negative charge is. Negative charges, it, when it comes to the kingdom of the law of attraction, aren't bad. Creating a negative charge is like turning on a vacuum that pulls in the blessings of God towards you. Now, I know it seems simple, but I'm gonna explain even more. So what's a negative charge in the spiritual realm? There's many of them. For example, giving. When you give with a cheerful heart and with